23rd of October 1989, Pasadena, Texas, an explosion could be heard from miles from its origin and the resulting fireball could be seen from more than 15 miles away. Today we will be looking at the famous Phillips disaster and take a look at the engineering and what went wrong in the process. I am your host Akshay Kurwa and let's begin. The fire and the subsequent blast originated at the Phillips Petroleum Company's Houston Chemical Complex facility and the initial blast registered 3.5 on richer scale and the conflagration took 10 hours to bring under control. The explosion killed 23 employees and injured 314 others. The plant produced approximately 6.8 million tons per year of high density polyethylene a plastic material used to make milk bottles and other containers. The HDPE production was done using process circulated through an arrangement of 30 inch diameter pipe mounted vertically in 150 feet tall continuous ring like structures called as loop reactors. The loop reactors contained a catalytic reaction that produced HDPE and the raw materials were ethylene and isobutane as a dilutant and hydrogen and hexene were also added to achieve target product quality specifications. Thus the raw material in the loop were highly flammable especially under the process conditions of 600 psi and a temperature of 80 to 110 degrees celsius. Six settling legs were located at the bottom of each loop reactor. Now each settling leg consisted of a flanged 8 inch diameter pipe connected to a pneumatically controlled 8 inch diameter ball wall. Beyond this, the ball wall was an 8 feet length of run of straight pipe where the reaction product, a polyethylene fluff, was collected. According to design, the polyethylene fluff was expected to move freely to the settling leg from the loop reactor to the flash tank but in reality the fluff tended to, to collect inside the settling leg. The accumulation of fluff would develop into a large cylindrical log inside the settling leg. Eventually the log would become large enough to interrupt the product transfer between the loop reactor and the flash tank. Since production would cease if all of these six supporting legs got plugged with these logs, so invasive and routine maintenance was required in order to remove these logs from these supporting legs. So the settling log maintenance was performed when the plant was actually running at the normal temperature and pressure. So it was critical to isolate these settling logs in order to perform maintenance safely. The nominal procedure for closing the 8 inch ball balls is to lock them closed and disconnect the actuator air hoses. Then the operators then contact the maintenance contractor to remove the polyethylene logs from each of the plugged settling logs. On the fateful day, the reactor lost its entire contents of more than 40 tons of highly flammable process materials and almost instantaneously. And within the next two minutes, the flammable vapor cloud ignited and exploded shortly after 1 p.m. local time with a force equivalent to 2.4 tons of TNT, registering a 3.5 magnitude earthquake on richer scale. The US Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, was asked to conduct an investigation. The findings were that the 8-inch ball wall was found open, the manual lock was removed from the wall stem, and the 8-inch ball wall actuator hoses were found reconnected and they were not disconnected as required by the local site's alternative maintenance procedure. It is unfortunate that OSHA was not able to derive the specific sequence of events that led to the disaster. Since this is understandable since uh, no one in direct contact of the equipments that uh, led to the release survived the explosion. However, investigation reports suggest that the following sequence occurred prior to the disaster. 1. The ball walls were not locked closed while disconnecting the settling legs and poorly trained workers switched the actuator hoses. 
This incorrect actuator hose configuration would open the 8 inch ball valve with the actuator switch showing the valve to be closed. This led to large leakage of highly flammable liquid into the atmosphere, which eventually found a spark source and led to catastrophe. Additionally, there were no warning systems in place to give notice of the impending disaster. In addition to the priceless lives lost, the company and its contractor, Fish Engineering, faced several fines and lawsuits, which could have all been avoided if adequate worker training was provided. Well, I hope you guys learned one lesson from the case study that we did today and uh, keep supporting us. Uh, take care. Bye.